Hi, this is Dr. Boseman, and I'm going to walk you through how to create a data collection application using ArcGIS Online. And what you can do is distribute this collection device onto a mobile um, device, such as your phone or your iPad. Go out into the field and start collecting data, which you can then put back on a map and create an interactive map. So how people basically go out and start collecting field data. What you will create is this, and so this is the final map. Uh, you'll see different versions throughout the video. And so here you'll start to see the different uh, input variables that you can uh, kind of put into your map. And then this is the final kind of data input that I created. To start creating your data collection app, you need to sign in to your uh, Workspace Esri account and go to content. So here is a list of all of your different material that you've created and you're going to create and feature layer. If you have the default user login, you're not going to find create feature layer. So just ask Dr. Bozeman and she can change your privileges. So you're going to go to create a layer and here you'll find a whole bunch of different templates. We're going to build one from scratch. And so you can play around with any template you want. What we want, though, are points, lines, and polygons. So areas, lines, and then specific places on a map. So we'll create this. And kind of the first thing you do, we're going to rename things. So you just click on them and then rename. And so because we're going to be using, creating a map around uh, areas in a park, we're going to do places, paths, and areas. So you can also have it in any place you want. The extent of the map, this is the default, so it's really, really helpful to have it to the extent that you want it so that you can actually see where you are. It's not very user-friendly to have it at an extent where your users are going to be, say, in New Jersey and you have the extent either the entire world or in Connecticut not very helpful and kind of something to play around with as you start to develop different apps and materials. So because we're going to create an, a map to pull in different areas around East Rock Park, this is East Rock Park in New Haven, this is the extent that I want. We're going to keep that extent for right now. You can change this, but it's just annoying to and a little bit more difficult to do it on the back end. So we're going to name it East Rock Park New Haven CT. Uh, if you put in commas, it won't let you actually save it. Um, feel free to try. So click done and it's creating our feature layer. Sometimes it takes a second or two and then from this, it's going to take you to your content area for this feature layer. And you need to start creating the content of what you want on the back end. So it's basically like all of the different material on the back end. There we go. So it's loading and it throws you to the content. And so just to show you, if you go to content, you'll go, this is what we just created. We'll click into here. And this is kind of the view that you have. So it gives you kind of to open up in the map viewer, which we're going to do after we finish setting it up. We have our places, our paths, and our areas, which is data we're going to cre create and place into our different layers, which is basically data information that we can kind of overlay on top of each other. Uh, on the right side here, we have a whole bunch of other information around this particular content. And first we're going to go into data because what, we, what we're creating is a layer to accept data from a user and we need to show and create how that data is going to be organized and what data is even going to be asked for. So first we have our places up here. And so if we click down here, we have paths and areas. So we have to actually configure all different parts of it. We're going to do places and then come over here to the fields and click fields. So right here, this is all the information that we're going to create. Most of this is default, but we're going to, to add material here. So we're going to create add. 
and we're going to add uh, a field name, which is basically our uh, field name of how our data is going to be called. And so asset type, it's good habit not to put a space in here. Uh, and then the display name is what actually is going to be shown to the user. And so type of amenity is actually what we want. Here we actually are going to use integer, and I'll show you why in a second. And then we're going to add field. And so it shows up here. Then we're going to go to um, this, this display name here, click on it, and we can actually start to create different material related to this input. So we're going to click Create List. And here we can start to create all the different aspects that we want. So we're going to create Water Fountain. And then our stored value here is going to be 0. We're going to create a restroom. So these are all aspects that you might find in a park. And it might be nice to know where that material is. Explain what all these points are in a minute. Jungle gym. Basketball court. Maybe number four. And then main entries. Maybe number five. And so each of these codes are basically the, the data that are going to be stored in place of this point. So when you analyze data, rarely do you want this whole word in there. You just want an identifier. And the identifier is easiest if they're just codes. So here we can also start to reorder them. And it's always nice to read all of the directions as they show it to you in each field. So main entries, I think, would be probably something to ask for first. Uh, maybe the restroom, maybe a basketball court, water fountain, uh, maybe water fountain first. All right, so we want to save that. And that's what we have related to this type of amenity. So we're going to go close this part out, and we have it here. We're also going to add in a little field for notes. And so because there's no space, I don't have to shove it against the space. A string is basically, we're going to have uh, 256 characters available for this. And we'll click Add New Field. And so notes comes down here. OK, so this is our basic setup for what we want. And we're going to then come down and have to do all of the other ones as well. So we have paths. We have um, the same. We're going to do the same thing. And so paths. Um, I will just call it paths. And uh, I'm going to use keep it for string for right now. I'm going to add new field. And so then we're going to come in and configure our paths. And so for paths, I'm thinking um, a trail. We're going to have a stored value of 0. We're going to have a biking path, stored value of 1, maybe a um, sidewalk, the stored value of 2, and then maybe parking stored value of 3. OK. That looks pretty good. We'll save that. And these are our values here. And then we're going to add a notes page here, just in case. Notes are always nice just to add in for random notes that you catch all for when you didn't know you needed to know something. For areas, we're going to add in a certain um, little place for areas. And we're going to do a string again. And we're going to come here and create our list. And so maybe barbecue area. And then we're going to have um, maybe grassy area. And so we'll have these values here. OK. All right. And then we're going to create one more area for notes and notes. And then we're good. 
Okay. So this is all of the data that we have, all of the different aspects. So we go back to overview. We have, this is where the different layers are going to be, and we were in each individual component. You want to make sure you can, uh, your attachments are enabled. So if I click disabled, it'll say, do you want to disable them? And I do not want to, I want to keep them enabled. So this will allow people to put pictures up for each location if you, if you want. So we may not need it for each one, but uh, for right now, it's, it's good to keep in there. Now we're going to open Map Viewer and add to New Map. 